my name's Liz, I'm the baker that sews. Welcome to my channel if you're new and welcome back if you're a subscriber. As always, it's really lovely to have you here as I share my sewing journey. So welcome back to one of my Sunday sewing catch-ups. We're on episode 78. I've got my notebook in front of me because I've got lots of things that I want to talk about today. Um, before I dive into all of the things that I've got to share with you, I'll let you know what I'm wearing. And I've popped on one of my... Um, I can't remember when I made this. I want to say it's quite an older make. I made it probably about a year ago, I think. Um, and it was inspired by using up lots and lots of my scrap fabrics. So it's a patchwork dress where I constructed the patchwork fabric first and then I used the fabric as you would with a regular piece of fabric to cut out the pattern. Um, I've based it on the Talina Buttons indigo dress um, with that sort of relaxed fit bodice. Um, but then I've changed the sleeves. So the sleeves are the Anna Allen Anthea blouse sleeve because they've got a lot more volume and I really wanted to utilise all of the patchwork fabric. Um, I'll stand up so you can see what it looks like, but I will put, put, put pictures in of me wearing the outfit because uh, it's going to be really tricky to show you. Um, but yeah, I've used quite large um, sort of patchwork. patchwork. So I've used quite large patchwork sort of squares and rectangles and then sewn them together, finished the edges on the inside and then like I said just used it as a massive piece of fabric and then cut out um, the pattern. Really voluminous sleeves that I've finished with elastic, um, so both of them are like that. Um, I didn't sort of mirror the um, pattern layout and the fabric for each sleeve, I've just done it um, just based on the fabric. Um, and then this is the skirt, so the skirt is quite relaxed and then it's also um, got a ruffle on the bottom. You can't particularly tell that that's a ruffle apart from the fact that it sticks out ever so slightly because of all the patchwork. I've got some fabrics that are sort of close together and then I've got some fabrics um, which sort of are not too far away from each other. There's a real mixture of textures in this dress. So this is quilted fabric, this is viscose, this is a crepe, this is almost like a linen-y um, sort of canvas. Uh, I'm trying to see what else we've got. That's like a sort of really lightweight sort of gauzy fabric. We've got seersucker. Um, yeah, that's like a lightweight gauzy fabric. And then lots of these sort of patches of um, the quilted fabric, which I was really pleased to be able to get in. So yeah, that's the front part of the skirt and then it continues all the way around and then like I said the sleeves are patchwork as well and then so is the back. Um, I will put pictures in just so you can see because it's really tricky to show um, what this dress looks like. I really love this dress. Um, I don't wear it very often actually um, but I popped it on because I was going to get my nails done. I'll show you what design I went for. I don't know if you'll be able to see. If you can't, I'll pop an image in. But we're off to a festival um, in a week's time. So I went for festival-y type nails. Um, so they're just kind of rainbows. And then they've got hearts on as well. Um, so my daughter comes with me now to get her nails done. I'll put a picture in of what her nails look like too. She's really loving choosing really cute little designs. So she went for um, kind of like a turquoisey blue and then a duck on one of her nails. Whereas I've gone for rainbows. I thought that they were nice sort of festival design. Um, and I'm going to be digging out all of my colourful makes um, ready for next weekend. I'll try and continue sharing next weekend my Mimo May outfit but it might be a little bit tricky because where we are there's not a great signal um, and we're away for like we go the Friday come back on the Monday um, so my battery might not last on my phone either but I will share the outfits when I get back because I love being able to dress up for the festival I tend to get all my really colourful makes out um, and I've got a couple of jumpsuits that I like to wear there too and I've got a couple of makes that I would really love to get sewn up. I'm being very, very optimistic, but I'd really love to try and get them sewn up before we go away. I've just ordered some sequiny fabric from Fabric Godmother in the hopes, very, very optimistically, that it'll arrive in time so I can get a sequined jacket um, sewn up. We'll see. But anyway, that's what I'm wearing. Um, like I said, really, really love it. Makes me smile. Um, haven't worn it a huge amount, but I popped it on today. It's going to get my nails done. Um, and I really loved wearing it and I got quite a few compliments about it as well and I was brave enough, I'm getting much better at saying thank you, I made it. Um, and then I've popped on a headband um, just to add extra pattern clashing. I've popped on one of my headbands 
um, and this is in like a pot plant themed um, fat quarter that I got from So Hilly Jane. I'm really loving wearing these headbands at the moment, especially when my hair's like a little bit fluffy. Um, it's quite nice, it sort of tames the frizz. And then I've also got some acrylic um, earrings in, and these are from, I don't wanna say the name wrong, so I've got the little packet here. These are from Jazz and Wow Handmade, and I actually bought some buttons from them as well. Might just grab the buttons. I'm just trying to think where I put them. Um, I'm just going to go and grab the buttons actually so you can see. But this is the company. I'll link them down below. So I bought these earrings from them. They're absolutely gorgeous. I love them. And then I also bought these buttons. They're so cute. Love the colours. And then also these like flowery buttons too, which I think, I don't know if you're going to be able to see them, but I think they're super cute as well. Um, so yeah, the company's called Jazz and Wow Handmade. And I've worn these quite a few times um, this week. I've got so many um, like necklaces and earrings that I don't wear them often enough. So part of me made May, I've been really sort of making sure that I go through my jewellery before I leave the house in the morning. And I've been putting on a lot more of my earrings and I've been getting loads of really lovely compliments, um, which is just really kind. Um, and I've been able to talk about where I've got them from. So as well as talking about my garments, I've also been able to talk about my accessories um, and get word of mouth out about all these amazing independent businesses. So I definitely recommend Jazz and Wow if you haven't checked them out. I'll link them down below. They've got an Instagram page um, and delivery was really speedy as well. So that's what I'm wearing. Um, on to what I have been sewing this week. So I've got three things to share with you, two things complete, Actually, I've got four things to share with you because one of them was almost like a toile of the dress that I finished making for myself. It's far too small, so actually my daughter's ended up wearing it and I've forgotten to pick that up. I'm going to pause the video so I can just go and grab it. I've got it. Um, she put it on as soon as I finished making it yesterday. So I'll start with that. And this was actually a toile um, because I wanted to have a go at sewing up the Ravina dress, which is a Tammy handmade pattern. I'll talk about the pattern in a second. And I bought some black metallic jersey fabric from Newcraft House. They had three different colourways of this fabric, I think. There was a black metallic one. There was a pink metallic one. Oh, maybe it was four. I feel like there was a gold and there was a silver. Um, there was one colour that I originally wanted and they sold out of that. Um, so I went with the black instead, which is an unusual colour choice for me. Normally I go for like bright, colourful um, sort of fabrics, but I really loved the look of this fabric and it's got sort of a bit of a sheen to it. So I'll show you the fabric first. This is the fabric. How gorgeous is that? So it's just black and then it almost looks like it's got sort of glitter on the top of it. Um, it's sort of textured. I was a little bit worried about what this would feel like on the inside because the um, Ravina dress, the bodice is fully lined. So what I did actually was I just used the wrong side of the fabric um, for the inside of the fabric. So I made sure that when I was um, stitching it, you're supposed to do right sides to right sides to attach the lining. I just did right sides to wrong sides so that I could make sure the wrong side would be against my skin and also against Lola's skin. This fabric has only got 20% stretch. I didn't realise when I was buying it. And the Ravina dress, you need fabric that's got 40% stretch. So when I first made it, I could get it on. Um, I just twirled the bodice, first of all, because when I sewed up the rear dress, I found that the dress was too big on me. So I thought I'd twirl the bodice of the Ravina dress just to check the fit. So I, and I also sized down. So I was between an eight and a 10 for the Ravina dress. So I went with the eight tried this on and it was really squashing me. I could just about get it on, but it was really squashing my bust. So in the end, I sized up by two sizes. So instead of cutting out the 10, I cut out a 12 um, for the top, but I stuck with a eight for the bottom because my waist and my hips put me in an eight. It was my bust that put me in a 10. So I, um, I sort of graded the two. So this little top is the Ravina dress, but I've just sewn the top for Lola. And the reason she's just got the top is because it was a 12 for myself, but she's really enjoyed wearing it. So a bonus little top, like little crop top for her, and she'll probably bring that away with us um, next weekend. And then I used, I bought two meters of the fabric, so I knew that I'd have enough to be able to twirl the top and make it um, in the fabric as well. I wanted to twirl it using this fabric because I was unsure about the stretch. Um, so I'm glad that I got two meters. I've used all of the fabric now, apart from teeny weeny little slithers of the fabric. Um, 
So I'll hold it up and show you what it looks like and then I'll talk about the pattern and I'll also put pictures in of me wearing this dress. Um, it's very different to my usual style. I've been saying that in the last couple of videos. I'm trying patterns that are different to my style and in my um, question and answers vlog that I published the first part of on Wednesday, I do talk about not really choosing um, or, or, or feeling comfortable wearing garments that are quite fitted to my body. But actually, I really loved wearing this dress. So it's got quite wide straps and then it's got an ever so slight curve on the bodice there. The back bodice is straight, the bodice is fully lined and then it's quite a fitted skirt. It's really tricky to show you because of this fabric but um, it's quite a fitted skirt and then you've got quite a high slit up the front. And the front skirt's a really interesting construction because you cut the back skirt on the fold and then the front skirt you've got two uh, pattern pieces so you've got the pattern piece for this section of the skirt and then you've got the pattern piece for this section of the skirt and you construct that separately and then attach it to the back skirt really really pleased with how this has turned out I wore it with tights and heels um, and I think it'll be a really lovely dress to wear out to dinner with my husband or if I'm going out with my friends as well um, wasn't planning to make that but I did order this fabric with this pattern in mind so I'll just let you know a little bit about the pattern. So it's a pattern by Tammy Handmade and it's called the Ravina dress. You can also um, sew it just as a crop top. And you can also, I was gonna say you can sew it as a skirt. I'm not sure if you can sew it as just a separate skirt. But you can definitely sew it as just a crop top. Um, it comes in sizes UK 6 to 32. Um, it's a stretch midi dress, which has got a fully lined bodice and a square neckline. It's got quite wide straps that will cover your bra as well. And the um, bodice at the back covers your bra as well because it comes up quite high. Um, it's designed to just slip over your head. In terms of fabrics, they recommend light to medium weight fabrics with at least 40% stretch. So like a stretch velvet or a viscose jersey. A viscose jersey will give a slightly different look because it's a little bit more drapey. Um, and yeah, I'm really pleased with it. In terms of construction, it comes together really, really nicely. Um, it's quite straightforward. The instructions are really simple to follow. I ended up sizing up for the bodice and sizing down for the skirt, but that is, I think, more because this um, fabric only had 20% stretch and actually the um, fabric recommendations, they recommend that you have 40% stretch. So, actually, I might have a scrap of the fabric to show you rather than stretching my skirt. It has got good recovery, actually. Um, but, yeah, this is the fabric. It does look quite sheer, but actually when it's on my body, it's not sheer at all. Um, I just made sure that I wore black underwear, but actually I wore it with tights. Um, even without tights, you can't see my underwear. Um, so, yeah, you can see it has got that stretch, but it hasn't got that 40% stretch has got really good recovery actually as well. Um, so I think that's why I had to size up. I am gonna sew this again in a fabric that has got 40% stretch just so I can check the fit on my body. Um, but it is a really close fitting garment. So I would definitely say um, it's worth twirling the dress just to get that fit right on the bodice. Um, it is quite closely fitted in the hips and also in the waist as well. Um, so if you are thinking about sewing it up, those are things just to consider. Um, I'm definitely going to have a go at sewing it again in a different uh, fabric, probably a viscose jersey. I haven't actually bought a viscose jersey yet, but I will definitely have a go at sewing this up in a viscose jersey that has got 40% stretch and just see what the fit is like um, for that pattern. But yeah, unexpected make but really enjoyed sewing it and I'm really pleased with how the dress has turned out. So the next thing that I have been busy doing is fixing the Tammy Handmade Rear dress. So I shared this last weekend. Um, I'd sewed it up in a uh, viscose, this gorgeous viscose. I think I got this from Stitch and Ink. Um, and it was far too big. It just felt far too big on the, the front, far too big on the back. The skirt is meant to be quite loose fitting and I do quite like that look. But I think because the bodice just felt, it felt far too low. I felt really uncomfortable. I couldn't wear a bra with it. And I feel like I personally, I like to have that support of a bra. And if I don't have the support of a bra, then I like to have quite a close fitting bodice so that you have still got that support. And I just didn't feel like I had that with the rear dress. So what I ended up doing, I did have just enough fabric to recut the front and the back bodice. And I could recut the front 
um, lining fabric but then I had to use a different fabric to line the back bodice and you'll see that here I've used just a green gingham fabric um, and where you understitch the lining to the front and the back bodice you actually can't see the fact that it's a different lining on the back at all if I hold it up you can't see the lining doesn't creep through at all and it doesn't creep through on the back either um, what I ended up doing was I sized down completely um, so I cut out a six for the front and the back bodice um, when I cut out a six I then just used a centimeter seam allowance instead of a 1.5 centimeter seam allowance just so it gave me a bit of wriggle room with the not wriggle room wiggle room with the fit of the bodice I also decided to go with the tie straps instead of just the straps that you sew onto the bodice um, front and back and I thought that would give me a little bit of wiggle room as well in terms of adjusting how far that sort of v-neck line is at the front and how that scoop neckline is at the back as well. Um, sizing down to a six means that the bodice is a lot more fitted um, and I'm really pleased with how it's turned out. I didn't adjust the skirt at all, I'd already sewn up the skirt so I just chopped off the bodice recut the bodice front and back, recut the straps and then constructed it. Um, I constructed the bodice, tried it on, checked that I was happy with the fit and then I attached the skirt. And then I also once I'd put the skirt on, I then adjusted the straps to make sure that I was happy with the fit. And sizing down means that it is still um, sort of a relaxed fit dress because that is the style of the dress, but it's just not as relaxed fit as the original was. And I feel much more comfortable wearing this. And I've also, uh, the other thing that I did was I adjusted the width of the straps. So the straps are meant to be um, sort of thinner than these. Um, did I double? I don't think I doubled the width, but I definitely added like a centimetre on the width of the strap. And then what I had to do on the bodice was I had to just make sure that I could, I widened this section so that the strap, as you can see there, fits the width of the bodice and it wasn't going to get squished or anything like that. So I just had to tweak this part. Um, if I hold it up. So I just had to tweak this part of the bodice front and I had to do the same on the back of the bodice just to make sure that the straps aligned nicely with that. So really pleased with how this has turned out and I'm really pleased that I was able to fix um, the fitting issues that I had with that dress. It is meant to be quite a relaxed fit. I just felt it was too relaxed fit on me when I sewed up a 10. So I sized down for the bodice to a six, widened the straps, widened this part of the bodice as well and I'm really pleased with the fit now. I feel a lot more comfortable wearing this dress. So it was definitely worth persevering. I'll put pictures in of me wearing that dress just so you can see what it looks like but I definitely feel a lot more comfortable in the garment. And then the final thing that I've been busy sewing, it isn't finished yet but I've been working on it over the last couple of weekends just doing a little bit here, a little bit there and it is the Nina dress by Fibre Mood absolutely love this bodice shape absolutely beautiful so I spent about five hours yesterday finishing off the pleats on the front bodice doing the pleats on the back bodice constructing the front and back bodice attaching the front sort of this pleat section to the back pleat section and the sleeves um the skirt was pretty much constructed I haven't hemmed it yet I'm going to attach the bodice to the waistband and then the skirt um, and then hem the skirt. So I'm almost finished, but it has been a very long process sewing this dress up. So let me hold it up and show you. The pleats are all done. It looks really, really strange at the moment. I'll hold it up so you can see what it looks like. Just to say it's really difficult to hold up at the moment because it's just the sort of gorgeous winged sort of sleeve, front bodice, back bodice, sleeve detail. And then there's a bodice underneath as well that you attach this to. Um, I've done the bias binding and I've also inserted the um, tie strap detail at the back as well. There, I don't know why I've still got a clip on there. I don't need that clip. Um, but yeah, I've attached the tie detail onto the back as well there. It's a really funny shape at the moment because you've got these gorgeous sort of winged sleeves. It's a really funny shape. Um, I have enjoyed it. It's been quite tricky. I will say that I found the fiber mood pattern instructions quite sparse. So I've found myself like really zooming in on the images on Instagram. I've read a couple of reviews. I watched the fiber mood. I've got a video for the pleats. In the end, I just did my own thing with the pleats. 
um, and I'm, I'm pleased with how they've turned out actually I think they do look really pretty um, this sleeve detail is just absolutely gorgeous but yeah it, it's been a long 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 process just putting the pleats in alone took a really long time in the end I've got 26 pleats on the both fronts so that is what 52 pleats in total and then I've got the same on the back so I've done 104 pleats in total um, I think it's going to be worth it I'm a little bit apprehensive because of the construction it's really difficult to fit the bodice to your body I found that process really difficult because of the way that it's constructed I undo the tie detail I'll show you you construct the pleats on the front and the pleats on the back and then you attach those together and then you then you um, create the front bodice which is this piece here and the back bodice and then you attach that you finish that with bias binding so that is finished with bias binding and then you attach this detail this section the front and the back sort of they call it the front and back bodice but you've also got the front and back bodice pattern pieces here and this is attached to that section so then you attach that but then when i hold that up against myself if i put this on i'm probably not going to be able to it's really difficult to work out how that's going to sit on your body um because it's really tricky because i've got it um i've got another dress on and obviously it's not all constructed but this is where my bust is so i feel like it's not going to fit but i've looked on instagram on images i've read some blog reviews and that waistband looks like it comes up quite high um so hopefully it will fit but it's been really really difficult to be able to try and fit it because of the construction so we'll see what happens if it doesn't fit me i'm sure lola will claim the dress for herself but i'll be really sad if it doesn't fit me I've also found on the pattern pieces, I don't know if I've got them here. Um, when I was cutting it out, I did just cut the pattern out straight from, I got it copy shop printed at the fold line and I did just cut it out. Um, like I said, the I think I said this a few weeks ago, the pattern pieces weren't labelled. So I used the instructions to label the pattern pieces. But then you've got all these different notches and, and markings on the pattern. But it's not really clear what the notches are for. It's not really clear what all these markings are for either i found the instructions are quite sparse and at times i felt a bit like i don't really understand that instruction so in the end what i've had to do is just think other garments that i've constructed although i haven't really constructed any garments in a similar way to the way that this bodice is constructed but i've looked at images on instagram i've looked at images in the instructions i've looked at the fiber mood images as well and i've just thought carefully about how I think the bodice should be constructed whilst using the limited instructions that Fibre Mood give you and then sort of work it out from there. And actually I was able to follow the instructions and figure it out and, and do the steps in the way that they do suggest. I've just kind of gone about it in my own kind of way of making sense of the instructions. I think, I know there is a review blog, I can't remember the person that's done the review blog but I'll put an image in now. Um, apologies because loads of people have told me about this blog and um, but I think I will do my own review blog of the Nina dress by Fibre Mood just so I can talk about how I went about the construction how I found the instructions how I find fo found following the steps how I went about doing the pleats etc let me know in the comments if you think that would be helpful but I think for my own kind of um, reflection on sewing up this pattern I think I will do a um, vlog just talking about my own experience with it um, hopefully it will fit. I'm really excited about putting on the waistband and then attaching the skirt. Fingers crossed it fits me and then hopefully I'll have a really beautiful dress because I absolutely love this fabric. I think it's absolutely stunning and I think it will make a really gorgeous dress, hopefully, if it fits me. And then if it does, it's not put me off from making another one. I've got a couple of pieces of fabric that I've definitely got put to one side with this um, pattern in mind. I just need to make sure that I approach it in the same way that I have with this one, where I just do a little bit here and there so it doesn't feel like, um, it just doesn't feel, I don't know, the, the pleats took a really, really, really long time and they felt, because you're just sewing straight lines, it did feel a little bit tedious in parts. So I think if I was to make it again, I would approach it in the same way of just doing a little bit each weekend so eventually the dress comes together maybe over the course of a month which is probably what's going to happen with this dress it's taken me about three weeks to get to this point just doing a little bit across each weekend um so i will update you of course 
um, once the dress is finished. Um, and I'll also be sharing it over on my Instagram as well. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, I'm at the baker that sews. So I'll be sharing the dress over there too. But that's everything that I have been sewing so far this week. And I've got plans as usual, which I'll talk about at the end of this video, for what I'd like to get sewn up um, in the next week or so. And then I've got one more week of school and then it's half term. So I'll definitely get some things sewn up over half term as well. So the next thing I wanted to share with you was some fabric. I've got a bumper selection of fabric that I've been buying from Rainbow Fabric. So I'll start with that first. So... There's another pattern that I've talked about, which is the Roberts Wood um, Alicia Bow Dress, I think it's called. And I've bought some tulle fabric from Sister Mintaka that I'm hoping to use to sew up that dress. But I want to do a toile of that dress first before I use the tulle fabric from Sister Mintaka. So when I was looking on the Rainbow Fabrics website, um, I've bought some fabric that I've got. Um, some dresses in mind for. I also noticed that they had some organza fabric that was quite cheap. I think it was like three pounds a meter or something. So I've bought, um, I think I've got four meters of each of these just so I've got enough if I need to do a couple of twirls of the, the bodice of the Alicia bow dress. So I've got this one, which is like a lilac-y purple organza. Then I just got the organza that they had. So some of these um, colors are quite bright. So this is a neon um, sort of organza. And then they had this dark red, which I've gone for. And then they had this blue as well. So I'm just gonna use these four twirls of the um, Alicia bow dress. And I'll update you once I've twirled that to see um, if I've had to tweak the fit or anything like that. Um, and then I had my eye on this gorgeous um, crepe fabric. It's a viscose crepe fabric from Rainbow Fabrics. I've had my eye on this for a while. I absolutely love the green with the blues and the white. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's got a beautiful amount of drape and I think I've got three meters of this fabric and I'm going to be using this to sew up the Deer and Doe Magnolia dress. Um, and that's kind of linked to a challenge that I'm going to be talking about in this video a little bit later. But I think this will work really nicely for the Magnolia dress. Um, I think that drape and the weight of this fabric will just work so nicely for that dress. It's absolutely gorgeous. So I'm really excited about that. And then they had a drop of some cotton fabric. So the So Fruity Challenge, which is being run by Blossom Sandwiches, coming back for June. And I have got a couple of fruity fabrics in my stash already, but they had a couple of fruity fabrics um, in their latest cotton drop. Um, and I couldn't resist a couple of them. So this fabric has got lemons all over it. It's absolutely gorgeous. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to turn this into yet. Um, maybe just a gathered skirt. They described it as a cotton. Um, it does feel quite lightweight and it also feels quite crisp. So it's going to go in the wash and I'm hoping that when it goes in the wash, because it feels quite stiff at the moment, I'm hoping once it goes in the wash it will soften up a little bit. Um, but I really love the um, sort of lemon print with those big leaves all over that fabric. So I think probably just a gathered skirt in that fabric. Um, and I'll probably make one for Lola as well. Then I saw this gorgeous fabric, which is on a navy background and it's got pomegranates all over it. And I thought it was quite an unusual print because you don't often get fabrics with pomegranates. So I'm going to use this, um, I think, for a dress. Now, when I ordered this fabric, again, it was described just as a cotton fabric. It feels a bit like a canvas. Um, let me open it up so I can show you. And it's got the texture of a canvas fabric as well. I don't know if you can see that. Um, not a huge amount of drape. Um, it feels, it doesn't feel thick, but it doesn't feel lightweight. It's sort of medium weight fabric. Um, and I've used a fabric similar to this to sew up the Kokowawa Crafts Nutmeg Trench Jacket, but I sewed it with the view to wear it as a dress. I'll put a picture in now so you can see what it looks like. And I think that's what I'm gonna use this fabric for. I think it would make a really gorgeous, I think I've got that upside down. Yes, I have. Um, I think that would make a really gorgeous Kokowawa Craft nutmeg jacket, but I think I'll sew it up um, in the trench length and then just wear it as a dress. I think that's absolutely gorgeous. And then if I've got any left, I think a matching bag would work really nicely in that fabric. And then the final one I bought was with school in mind. And I'm just going to turn this into a shirt or a shirt dress. It's a white fabric, but actually it's not see-through at all. I'm always a bit wary of sewing with white, uh, just because I'm very messy. Um, but I really loved, 
I really loved the style of those animals. It looks like they've been drawn by children. And I know my class would absolutely love if I wore a dress made in this fabric or a shirt. So I'm thinking either the Anna Allen Anthea blouse with those big puff sleeves. I think that would work really nicely. Or I'm thinking the Tilly and the Buttons Lyra shirt dress. Or what else was I going to think of? Maybe the Deer and Doe Myosotis, perhaps. Um, so yeah, I'm thinking of turning that into a dress. I just thought that fabric was just super fun. Um, and I think it will inspire the children. We do something called um, Drawing Club with the children where the adult models drawing something from a book. So it might be the characters or it might be a setting. And then the children have a go in groups at drawing um, the setting or the characters. And I think this could work as um, a bit of inspiration for the children uh, to draw maybe if we did like Deer Zoo or something. It might work as a little bit of inspiration for them to draw some animals. So those are all the fabrics that I've got from Rainbow Fabrics. Um, I've been buying two fabrics from Fabric Godmother, but I don't actually have them with me. Um, but I'll put images in now so you can see what they look like. The first one is a stretch sequin fabric that was described, uh, I think it was named Lizzo. And it's like this... Um, sort of plummy pinky coloured um, sort of sequin with like a sort of a forest green, jade green, um, jewel toned sort of green um, sequin. And I'm hopefully going to turn that into a jumpsuit. And then I also ordered, um, it was called rainbow um, sequin fabric, I think. And that's going to be turned into a jacket. I haven't decided on the pattern yet. But I think that definitely needs to be turned into a jacket that I can hopefully wear uh, when we go away next weekend. Fingers crossed it arrives. I'm, I'm making that very tight, that plan. Um, but hopefully I'll get a bit of time in the next couple of um, evenings um, to start sewing that up and hopefully get it finished. We go away on Friday. So if, it, if I can get it all cut out and start sewing it and use a pattern that I know I've sewn a few times, then hopefully I can have a really fun jacket to take away with me uh, when we go camping. So that's all of the fabrics that I wanted to share with you today. So the next thing I wanted to talk about was a new pattern that's just been released by Sew Over It. I haven't bought this pattern yet, but it is a pattern that I've definitely got my eye on. I'm just waiting for some more people to share their pictures on Instagram so I can see what it looks like in different fabrics and on different um, body types. But the pattern is called the Jemima Jumpsuit and it's also a dress as well. It's a PDF only pattern. It comes in sizes UK 6 to 30 and that's in their two different size banding. So it's a pattern that's aimed at confident beginners. Um, it's got a V-neck front and a V-neck back. Um, wide um, sort of bra covering straps which I really like the sound of. It's got mirrored pleats in the front and trousers or skirt if you sew up the dress. It has no tricky closures and it's shaped with narrow elastic at the back waist um, and the neckline and the armholes are finished with facing. In terms of fabric recommendations they recommend drapey viscose or crepe for the jumpsuit um, and then also for the jumpsuit structured fabrics like a viscose linen or a chambray would work really nicely too. It looks great in a solid to really show off the pleats or it also works really nicely in a print fabric too. So I've seen a couple of really lovely jumpsuits so far and I really love the look of the mirrored pleat detail on the front. So I just I'm waiting to see a few more versions and then I might be tempted to buy that pattern. I don't actually need any more jumpsuits in my life. I've got loads of jumpsuit patterns, but I really loved the look of this. You could really dress it up or you could dress it down. Um, so yeah, I'm watching that hashtag uh, with interest to see what it looks like in different fabrics and I might find myself buying that pattern. So the next thing I wanted to share with you was a sewing challenge that's going to be running throughout the month of June. So I've already talked about Sew Fruity, uh, which is coming back, which I'm really excited about. But B Silver Creates, who is on YouTube and also in Instagram. I've got all the information in front of me and I don't want to get anything wrong, so I will be looking down for this. Um, but she's raising awareness throughout the month of June of um, high blood pressure and the complications that can be linked to that. She's released a vlog over on her channel where she talks about the death of her father from hypertension as well as lots of other things. Um, so I would recommend that you go and watch that video because she talks about the reason why she wants to raise awareness for high blood pressure um, and also talks through the rules of the challenge as well. She's raising money for a high blood pressure charity as well and she's got a GoFundMe uh, page set up as well and part of the challenge in June is um, 
she's encouraging us to go and donate to her um, chosen charity. So there's just a few steps that I'm going to talk through. Um, so she's asked that we donate to the blood pressure charity by following the link in her bio. So something that is on our sewing list that for whatever reason we haven't got round to doing. And I've got a couple of things that I'm going to talk about um, that I would like to get sewn up. Um, use the hashtag, hashtag so blood pressure UK 23 You can also use the hashtag so blood pressure UK 23 whip if you want to share sort of sneaky peeks of your progress. We need to tag B Silver Creates in our finished garment when we share on Instagram, as well as tagging UK Fabrics Online because they're sponsoring the challenge. Um, it's running between the 1st of June until the 30th of June. Um, and I've got two ideas to take part in this. I think it's a really great way of raising awareness for a charity and also for high blood pressure. So thank you for um, sort of thinking about this challenge and also running it throughout the month of June. I'm really looking forward to taking part. So I've got two ideas. I talked probably about a year ago about patterns that I've had in my stash for ages that I just haven't got round to sewing up. And actually I asked four people to vote on which pattern I should sew up. Two of the patterns that I'm going to make as part of this challenge were chosen. So the first one was the named Rita shirt dress. I've had that for years and I've wanted to sew it up for years. I've been put off because I've read quite a lot of reviews where it's been quite fiddly. Um, but I think spurred on by the fiddliness of the Nina dress, which is the fibre mood pattern, um, I feel like I'd like to give this pattern a go. So I've got a couple of um, cotton poplins in my stash. And I think I'll start with a cotton poplin for sewing up the Rita shirt dress. Um, just so that I can work with a really stable fabric if it is going to be a bit tricky whilst I get my head around the pattern construction. Um, and then I've got some viscoses that might work really well if I en end up enjoying the pattern and the way that it looks on me. So that's the first pattern I want to have a go at sewing up. And then the second one is the Deer and Doe Magnolia dress, which I've had in my stash for years as well. And the fabric that I'd like to use is this um, viscose crepe fabric from Rainbow Fabrics. That pattern takes up a lot of fabric and I know that I will have enough with this fabric. Um, so I'm looking forward to giving that one a try as well. I think I will need to twirl the bodice of the Deer and Doe Magnolia dress because it does look quite fitted. So I think I'll twirl that first. But in the month of June, I'm hoping to have a go at sewing up the named Rita shirt dress and also the Deer and Doe Magnolia dress as part of this wonderful challenge. Um, so thank you to B Silver Creates for running the challenge and I'm really looking forward to taking part in it as well. I'll link her YouTube down below and I'll also link her Instagram page so you can go and find out a little bit more about the challenge and maybe take part too. The next thing I wanted to share with you was a crochet kit that I've ordered inspired by my recent dabble in learning to crochet. So I attended a Satisfaction beginners crochet course, which was really fun. Really, really enjoyed it. I've just been practicing the techniques that I learned um, at the class. And then inspired by that, I've had a look at someone I've followed for ages and I really love what she does with crochet. Um, the, her page on Instagram is called The Pigeon's Nest and she's also got a shop uh, where she sells kits. And the kit is called um, Nada Tatara Learned Crochet and I have ordered one of her kits and it's arrived. It doesn't arrive like this, I've just ripped off my address label so that you don't see what my address is. I haven't even opened it yet, but inside... Um, it comes like this, you get a QR code which takes you to some videos um, and video tutorials so that you can have a go at learning to crochet and this is aimed at complete beginners so I'm really looking forward to giving this a try and then inside you get all of the wool that you need to make up the pattern so there's lots here then you also get the instructions and the pattern that I'm going to be sewing, sewing up and the pattern that I'm going to be crocheting is the OG granny snood pattern. So you learn to, to crochet granny squares, which I'm very excited about. And then you get a little needle, um, also get a little bit of a discount on there. And also there's a little note as well. Um, so I'm really excited about having a go at crocheting the snood. Um, I'll let you know how I get on with that. You also, sorry, I meant to say, you also get a crochet hook as well included. So I will keep you posted with how I get on. I'm going to take this away with us when we go away next weekend because um, there'll be lots of time sat in a field listening to live music. So I think this would be a great project to start having a go at. And I'm also going to take my little tote bag, which I've still got here on my chair, 
um, with the wool and the crochet hook from Satisfaction. So I can keep having a go at practicing those techniques and hopefully I'll get the hang of crochet, but I'll keep you updated with how I get on with that. And then I always like to finish with my sewing plan. So I've obviously got my jacket that I'm really hoping to get sewn up in the sequin fabric. I'm just really hoping that it arrives so I can get it cut out and sewn up. So I'll update you with that. And then I've also got the bucket hats that I got cut out and I shared with you in last Sunday's sewing catch up. So I've got bucket hat for myself for Ruby and also for Lola. I've already sewn one for my husband, but I will, I think I've got five that I've got to sew up. So then we've all got the option of wearing a different bucket hat across the weekend. Um, I have got the sunshine jeans cut out as well. So I'm looking forward to getting those started over half term. And then I've also got the ruffle bag that I had to cut out and I shared a few weekends ago as well. So as usual, lots and lots of things that I want to keep having a go at doing. Um, as well as learning to crochet by following the video tutorials by the Pigeon's Nest. So lots of things to keep me busy. Um, before I go, I wanted to give you a little bit of an update. So I've talked on my channel about um, my eldest daughter, Ruby. She has got scoliosis. So we had an appointment last week at the hospital uh, with the spinal experts where they looked at her scans x-rays etc and we decided on a plan and the plan is that she has got to have some surgery so she doesn't need to have the surgery until a couple of months so three to four months is the waiting time she's on the waiting list for the surgery but she'll be in hospital for about a week um, and she will have some drains coming out of the side so I'm already starting to think about some patterns that I can sew up for her that will be comfortable for her because she does have some sensory um, sort of um, needs around clothing and things. But I want her to feel as comfortable as she possibly can when she goes in to have her surgery. And then the recovery time is three months. Um, so she is going to need to wear quite loose fitting clothes, I think, and also loose fitting bottoms. So if anyone's got any suggestions, I know that's quite a niche thing to ask, but if anyone's got any suggestions of patterns and where I can look for sort of accessible sewing patterns please let me know in the comments below I've got a good couple of months but I want to start now sort of researching and um, buying some fabrics and then also starting to sew up a couple of things for her just so that she's as comfortable as she possibly can be while she stays in hospital and then also when she's at home so before I go, I just wanted to let you know that next Sunday there won't be a Sunday sewing catch up because I'm away for the weekend, but I'll be back the following weekend with my Sunday sewing catch up. I have got a vlog, hopefully I'll get it edited in time for Wednesday, but I've got the second part of my Q&A video filmed, I just need to edit it, so hopefully I'll have a video up on Wednesday. Um, but otherwise I'll be back the following weekend with my Sunday sewing catch up as usual. Thank you as always for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd really love it if you could hit that subscribe button. You'll get notified of when I bring out my next video. Thank you as always for watching. Take care and I'll be back soon with another video. Bye.